Well, the massive amount of companies that are reporting earnings rolls on, ladies and gentlemen. We just had AMD report earnings right now, and Apple as well just reported earnings. I just actually got off the Apple conference call right now. We got to talk about both these stocks, which are making big moves after hours. If you are new here, Apple's a very big stock in my household. Why is it a very important stock? Well, my wife's biggest position is in Apple, all right? Uh, two of my biggest positions, like two of my top four biggest positions in my portfolio are two semiconductor companies. These I've been adding aggressively last few months and they do a ton of business with Apple. And lastly, I just built a small position in Apple very recently when it made that huge drop and I covered that on the channel. So needless to say, Apple's a very important company in the household. AMD, we don't have a position in. So Apple after hours is making a pretty nice upward move up about five and a half percent after hours. I've seen it up more than 6% at some points, but as of taking the screenshot up about five and a half percent after hours, which is a decent size move for a for Apple. Now, as far as two Apple suppliers out there, two I own, they're making decent upward moves after hours as well. Cruise up 2.4% after hours and Skyworks Solutions up 2.6% after hours. So we'll have to see how it all shakes out in the actual trading day tomorrow. Now, just because a stock is up or down after hours, it doesn't mean it will actually do that during the trading day. For instance, yesterday, Whirlpool stock was down 6.5% after hours. And then all of a sudden today, it goes up like 9 or 10% during the actual trading day. So sometimes you might think, oh my gosh, the stock's going to go up a ton tomorrow and it actually goes down. And sometimes you think, oh my gosh, the stock's going to go way down tomorrow and it actually goes way up. So you just, you can't, you got to take it for what it is. All right. So I just got off this Apple conference call right now. And there's some interesting things we found out on that Apple conference call. First is they cited that the iPhone 10 R is the number one selling iPhone. I predicted that many months ago when those phones came out, I thought that would be the best selling one. And it is actually the best selling one. They specifically say that on the conference call, the second best selling is the iPhone that is a six point five inch, the massive one. And then the third best selling is actually that, that mid range one there. As far as Apple watch, they said they did record numbers of Apple watch. That is a hot seller. And as well as iPad, which is very surprising. This is the best growth they've had in years. in iPad iPad had been kind of a business that was in decline or, or near stagnation for quite a while. They just had uh, the best growth in iPad that they've had in years and years and years. So that's big news for them. The AirPods have been hot even as of now. Okay. They specifically cited on the conference call that they were selling very, very well, you know, better than they ever have. And even if you try to order them now, it still takes about a week or so to actually get the AirPods, which is surprising because we're pretty, we're, we're a long way past Christmas. So I'm not sure if it was the memes or what, but AirPods have become a very hot item. Uh, the second generation of AirPods, by the way, is supposed to come out some at uh, some point in the, in the first half of two, 2019. So we'll have to see about that. Now, as far as some more exciting things, and then we'll kind of get to the negatives, services, Mac, and where set new all-time revenue records. EPS reached an all-time high this quarter of $4.18. All right, that's very, very, very good news there. Now, as far as some bad news, because we definitely have some bad news here, all right? The first is total net sales were down 5%. That is bad news, all right? Because there's just no other way to twist it other than that. We'll find out exactly why that is in just a minute here. And if you look at net income, net income is down slightly. So although EPS is up a bunch. It's mainly because they bought back a ton of shares and then just left shares to count against that net income when, when calculating out um, that EPS. So, but needless to say, net income down very slightly and a pretty decent size decline in revenues there of around 5%. Now, when we look at this slide here, this shows you exactly why we see that decline, okay? We're gonna see a lot of green check marks mean a lot of good news. Mac was up nicely in the quarter year over year. Basically, the right-hand column shows you the, this quarter last year versus this quarter this year. Mac was up well over half a billion dollars. We had an iPad business up over a billion dollars year over year. We had the wearables, home, and accessories up nearly two billion dollars year over year. That's a massive increase there. Services up well over one and a half billion dollars year over year. So needless to say, most of those look great until you look at that very first line item, which is iPhone. iPhone was down nearly 10 billion dollars year over year. That is a massive, massive decline over year. And even though all the rest of the businesses is, are, are growing great right now for Apple, you're going to see that total net sales were still down just because iPhone is such a big business that whenever iPhone dips like that, it just hurts the company in such a big way. All right. Now it's becoming less and less because the other product categories are starting to become so big, specifically services at this point. But it's still when you got a $10 billion decline in iPhone business, it still hurts a company like Apple. All right. Now for some good news out there, cash, they still got $44 billion in cash on that balance sheet. 
$41 billion in marketable securities, $158 billion in long-term investments on that balance sheet as of right now, okay? Now for some more bad news. They guided revenue to come in somewhere between $55 billion and $59 billion for the upcoming quarter, okay? This quarter that we're already in at this point in time. The midpoint on that, which is usually what you want to look at when you see a guide range like that, the midpoint is $57 billion, right? Well, $57 billion, that comes massively under what analysts were expecting. Analysts were expecting around $59 billion. So midpoint being around $57, needless to say, Apple's, Apple's basically saying that we're going to come under whatever analysts are expecting. Unless things go the best possible way for Apple, they should come under what analysts are doing. Now on the conference call, the, the CFO specifically said that they want to be a little more cautious because they had such a big miss this, this past quarter. They want to be a little more cautious going in. But needless to say, it's still a $2 billion difference there between what analysts were expecting and the midpoint on what, uh, what Apple is actually expecting. So that's something to take into account there. Now, as far as good news, got another dividend coming. So basically, if you own Apple shares, you're going to get 73 cents a share coming up here in February. And, and I think they'll be raising that dividend probably sometime in the springtime. Now, what a lot of people might be asking themselves, they might say, why is Apple going up after hours? Like, why is the stock moving up? Like, I think overall, we heard a lot of bad news, especially around iPhone. And a lot of people are wondering, why is this up? But if you look at the Apple chart, right? You gotta understand that a lot of this negativity, a lot of the bad news had already been priced in. Just a few months ago, Apple stock was around $230. Then we got the bad news about basically iPhones, uh, you know, are selling very weak in China specifically. And basically that already brought Apple stock down in a massive, massive way. So there was a lot of thoughts that, that sales weren't go going very well that brought the stock down. There was also weakness in the market that brought the stock down. And then we got confirmation at the very beginning of January that basically iPhone sales were weak specifically in China, and that was hurting their business in a massive, massive way. And so a lot of the bad news was already priced into Apple stock, which is why you can get a stock here that, you know, when when the whole world's not falling for Apple, uh, you know, it can kind of make a bounce like this. We'll have to see what actually happens tomorrow in Apple stock. But as of right now, it's looking like it will probably be a pretty good day for Apple stock uh, tomorrow. All right. Now let's get into AMD. So AMD is making a nice move after hours up around 9% after hours. It did have a very bad day today. Today. It was down about four and a half percent today. Now this comes after Nvidia fell about four and a half percent today, and the previous day Nvidia fell around. You know, it was between thirteen and fifteen percent the previous day on some very very bad earnings coming out of Nvidia. Just some very bad news. Basically, Nvidia had already come under way under what analysts were expecting. Then Nvidia said, "Oh no, it's actually much much worse." And we even thought, um, and it was just a big big decline there in Nvidia stock. But as far as AMD, AMD says it expects revenue in two. 2019 to grow at a high single digit percentage while analysts were targeting around 6%. The company said despite near term graphic headwinds and revenue falling short of analyst estimates for the fourth and current quarters is banking on its newest graphics and data center chips to bolster growth for the year. Stifle analyst Kevin Cassidy said AMD's results were not as bad as feared especially compared to those of your mom. AMD's fourth quarter gross margin rose to 38%. From 34%, Wall Street loves a rising gross margin. It's one of the biggest metrics that's kind of like regular folks don't pay attention to, but my goodness, does Wall Street love a rising gross margin. Their company also said it expects adjusted gross margins to be more than 41% for 2019, the highest level in nearly eight years. The more resilient gross margin outlook provides some level of comfort to investors. Said this analyst, also AMD is well positioned to continue to gain market share from Intel in the high margin server market, especially in the second half of 2019 sales at AMD's computing and graphics segment, which includes graphic chip sales to data centers, rose 8.5% to 986 million, beating what analysts were expecting of around 939 there. So basically sales were a lot better to data centers out there. Now, what's very interesting about this is a chip maker forecast current quarter revenue to be around 1.25 billion, uh, plus or minus around 50 million. That's a drop of 24 percent last year, but that's also well below what analysts were expecting, which was around 1.47 billion. Its quarterly revenue of 1.42 billion also missed expectations of 1.45. So that right there is what we call a double miss in the stock market, okay? Basically, that means a company missed what analysts were expecting in the past quarter, and they're also saying, we're going to miss your guys' numbers that you were expecting for the next quarter as well. That's what we call a double miss there, which is very, very interesting that you could get an AMD stock up 9% after 
after hours on what we literally call a double miss, which is usually the worst case scenario for a stock. I, I, it's very rare that I see double misses out there, especially a decent sized double miss like AMD had uh, as far as next quarter's guidance goes. It's very rare that you'll see a double miss and a stock actually move up, but that's uh, exactly what has happened with AMD. And I think just the, all the negativity around Nvidia, a lot of people just thought it was gonna be the end of the world for AMD and the numbers were gonna be way, way worse than what they were and uh, they didn't come out to be worse. And, and you know, you get a stock up 9% after hours. Anyways, let me know if you own Apple stock or AMD stock. I would love to hear from you guys in that comment section. As always, make sure you smash the thumbs up. If you enjoy this, thank you for watching. Have a great day.